Welcome to Faith Revival Place International. Also Faith Revival Holiness Church. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you in advance for all that you do. Father, <laughs> this, having this human body can be a real experience, sometimes more than we want. But Lord, you, you help us with everything. And uh, even sometimes the technology is not always up to par. Maybe it's the self or maybe it's this or that. But, Lord, that's when we dig deep in you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We, we don't look on all these things down here. We look unto you. We thank you and praise you in advance. And we give all the glory to you. It's not about any of us, but all about you. So we thank and praise you in your holy name, amen. So let's pray for for the sick briefly because I, I wanna make sure that we all feel strong. We don't have all this aches and pains extra. You know, even if we go a little bit forward and not having a little bit less ache or pain, or maybe it's a miracle, maybe it's totally will be gone. But a lot of times we have a healing process. And a healing is, is something that gradually happens. A miracle is something instantly that happens. So, you know, naturally I want a miracle to happen for our lives. But sometimes it's a healing. Sometimes it's a process. Amen. Let's pray now. Look upon our affliction. Plead our case. Redeem us speedily for your name's sake. For you are a mighty redeemer. Amen. He's a, you're a mighty redeemer, Lord. Blessed are you, our redeemer. Heal us, Yahweh, and we will be healed. Save us, and we will be saved. For you are our praise. Grant perfect healing to all our ailments. For you're a mighty king and faithful and merciful healer. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, the healer of the the 12 tribes of Israel and the Christian Arabs. We thank you, Father. Father, we, if, if we're honest with ourselves, each one of us, we all have something that we need you to touch. So, Lord, we ask as, as, as you unified to touch our lives. I mean, maybe it's a headache. Maybe it's just we, we feel fatigued or maybe it's Something or something. We all have something where we need you. We need your touch upon us. All of us do. Some some people greater than others. But if we're all honest with our daddy, our God, our Savior, we all have something. So we we come in unison, one accord, saying, "Lord, touch our lives. Make us our lives easier that only you can do." Let me thank you and praise you. Amen. Today's sermon, pray, and I want to just praise the Lord. The Lord's so good, isn't he? Uh, today's sermon is building your whole, uh, holy temple. You can say building your home inside. But building your holy temple. Amen. That's today's sermon is building your holy temple inside of you. Amen. God wants to reside in us. So we, we have to be his holy temple. I know a lot of people still stuck on natural things like a natural third temple. But really, it's it's all about the spiritual temple within us. Within sight of men and women, God wants to reside with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, let us begin by going to the Psalms, chapter 23, verse 1 through 6. Praise God. I thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Yahweh is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He, ha he has me laid down in greenest pastures, meaning he wants to us to he wants to lay us in good good things. He wants us to be in a good place. He leads me to quiet waters. He restores my inner person. 
Inner person is another word used to describe our spirit, our inner person. He guides me in the right path. We need to trust in God. He's going to guide us in the right path for the sake of his own name. His own name. Praise God. Even if I pass through death, dark ravines. And if, if you ever done that, you would understand that can be pretty tremendous. And I will fear no disaster. For you are with me, for the Messiah is with us. So we have nothing to fear when disaster happens. Even though our flesh is going to give us a hard time, we have nothing to fear because we got Jesus on our side. We got the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Doesn't that bring peace to you? Amen. And the rod and staff, uh, uh, is with me. You prepare a table for me. God wants to prepare a table for us. Even as the enemies watch. You anoint my head with oil. And symbolically oil represents bringing joy upon. Completeness. Uh, restoration. That's what God wants to do. We just got to trust him and just stop harboring things that we shouldn't have in our lives. That's that simple. Every day of my life, and I will live in the house of Yahweh. Amen. We're going to live with the house of Yahweh for years and years to come. Hallelujah. Doesn't that bring subtleness into you? Praise God. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 4 through 8. We thank you, Father. We thank you, great almighty God. We trust in you. Amen. Nic Nicodemus said to him, said to the Messiah, How can I grow a man be born again? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? And Yeshua answered, Yes, indeed, I tell you, that unless a person is born from water and the spirit, unless the person is born by water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born from flesh is flesh. And what is born from spirit is spirit. Stop being amazed at my telling you that you must be born again from above. From above, but born again from above. The wind blows where it can and wants. You hear the, its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. That is how it is with everyone who has been born in, from the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So, building the holy tempers, remembering, remembering our foundation as well. Remembering that we're born from above. So, even though our flesh, well, sometimes more than, sometimes more than others, will get bothered by the things of this world, or maybe incline one way or another to the things of the world. We got to remember. We're born from above now. That God has given us a renewed spirit and uh, took in the hardest stone out of our hearts, get a hardest flesh. That God has been gracious with us. And so we need to be honest with God and say, God, Father God, we did a blunder here. Even if it's the smallest blunder. You know, what, you know how... The flesh can take over so easy in all of us. Paul talks about it. Isaiah does. So we need to trust in the Lord. Amen. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. Let's go over there together. And you know, and I know trust is a big word for a lot of you, but you got to trust in God. 
with all your heart, somebody in strength. Amen? Not leaning on our own understanding, which can be hard too. And it takes practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Amen? So let's read together. Don't you know that the that you people are God's temple, God's temple, that the God's spirit lives in you. Amen. So if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. Remember when God hurts one of our brothers and sisters, that the Lord knows about it, and the Lord will take vengeance on those that hurt one of our brothers and sisters. They're out here. They live for God. For God's temple is holy. We need to be holy. We need to be holy. It's the Lord our God is holy. And you yourself are that temple. So don't, don't have to look on the outside for a temple when we are that temple of God. You know, we are his holy temple, his, his, his workmanship. He's, we are being glorified day by day, learning how to be godly people every day. Amen. So let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Let's sit over there. Praise God. This is a remembrance for all of us, what, what I'm reading right now. Everyone who believes that Yeshua is the Messiah has God as his Father. Anyone who loves the Father loves his offspring too. Here is how we know that we are uh, we, we are know that God's children. When we love God, we also do what he commands. For loving God means obeying his commandments. See, if we love God, and we certainly trust God, we're going to obey his commandments. Moreover, his commandments are not burdensome, because any, anything which has God as, as his father at God as his father overcomes the world. So you want to overcome the world. Have God as your father. Amen. And and this is the victoriousness. Overcome the world. Our trust. Who does overcome the world if not the person who believes that Yeshua is God Almighty? Do you believe God? That Yeshua is God Almighty or just a good man? No. I, I hope you believe and understand for what you know in Scripture that God was made flesh and dwelled with us. And his name is Yeshua, Jesus. But in heaven, his name is all known by Yeshua. I mean, Yahweh. Yahweh, uh, 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 Yaira. The full fledged representing all who he is. Because he's one God. He commands, he says, he's one God. But the thing is, how you break this down is, we have a body, soul, and spirit. God says we're made in God's image and likeness, right? So we were creating his image and likeness, and therefore he has a body, soul, and spirit, and he displays it perfectly. And this is what God is displaying. He's displaying these likenesses of who he is as God, his body, soul, and spirit throughout the Bible. And you know what? This is why the devil thought he won. When, when, when our, our Lord and Savior, the image of, of the Father, died on that cross. But you know, the, the, the thing is... There's no greater love than lay your life down for your brother and sister. That is a universal heavenly world. When you do that, it's the greatest thing you could do. To lay your life down for someone else. And we see that in, in the normal society of, of mankind and womankind. is when uh, a soldier goes to war. 
and he loses a leg because he's trying to help his platoon from getting killed. He comes back. He gets a purple heart. Maybe he died. He still gets that purple heart. Well, th that all these things come because the principles that are written in heaven. So even in the natural, th these principles in, at, are at work. So there's no greater love and lay your life down. And that's what he did for us. And that's what he would want us to do for others. If, if it means protecting a whole bunch of people and, you, and, and you're the one that has to do it and you have to lay your life down so that others can, can be safe and be, and, and be an example of a true believer that loves his fellow brothers and sisters to protect them, their interests and, and represent what God did. And we have to do it. And see, that's what the Lord did for all of us. And his was perfect. Ours can never be that way, no matter what we do. But we do it because we love God and we love our fellow brothers and sisters that are born again too. Amen. And that's building our holy temple. It's realizing these things. These are all things that we need to realize in our life. Let's go to Psalms chapter 119, verse 41 through 48. Let's head over there together. Amen. Our, our God is a wonderful God, isn't he? He's looking after us, our interests, and things that we need. To. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the scripture saith, May your grace come to me, Yahweh, your salvation as you promised. Then I will have an answer for those who taught me. See, we're going to have the answer. Because the scripture promises it. And when the scripture says it, we can be comforted in those things. Amen. Let's read this. Let's read verse 42 again. Then I will have the answer for those who taught me. For I trust in your word. Amen. We trust in his word. We trust in his word. And the word was made flesh and dwelled with us. And it dwells with us every time we read it as well. Because it is the essence of what Jesus is, Yeshua, the Word of God is. Don't take any completely my power to speak the truth. But I put my hope in your ruins. See, we don't put our hope in government. We don't put our hope in even ourselves. We put our hope in God's ruins, in God's ways. And I will keep your Torah always, the good teachings of God. Forever and evermore. And I will go wherever I like. For I have sought your precepts. His ways. Amen. And I will speak your instructions even to kings. I will speak your instructions. Your directions even to politicians. Even to Hollywood. Even to myself. Even to my family. Even to my workplace. God's directions. Amen. Without being ashamed. And I will delight myself in the mitzvah, the holy ruins of God, which I have loved. And I will lift my hands to your mitzvah. We grab a hold of his holy commandments and say, this is beautiful. This is holy. This is something we can attain to every day and walk for the Lord because we love him which I love, and I will meditate on your laws. Amen. we got to meditate on God's laws because they're perfect. They're holy. And sometimes they, they go against our grain, but we got to understand God loves us. He, he chastises what he loves. What he doesn't, he lets go. But he eventually has to judge it so that they can come to repentance. God's judgment. God's perfect judgment in this world is, is meant for God, the correction and for the turning of those that are in wickedness back to righteousness. Amen. Remember that. But God judges this world. That's what he's doing. 
And when the Lord is working His perfect ways in us, and sometimes they're not always comfortable. Sometimes they are. But we can know that God is working His greatness in us. Amen. Every day. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. Praise the Lord. So let's keep trusting in Him, brothers and sisters. So if you were raised along with the Messiah, then seek the things above. It doesn't say things, seek the things of government or things of yourself. No, it says seek the things above, where the Messiah is sitting at the right hand of God. Focus your minds on things above, not on things of the earth. For you have died and the life is hidden in the Messiah. For example, the word of God here. Take your Bible. Put a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper. Shut the Bible. That's what the way you are supposed to be with the Messiah. Amen. In the Messiah, in Him, in the hope of our glory, the Messiah. Hidden, our life needs to be hidden in the Messiah. Just like putting a piece of paper in the Bible, shutting the Bible up. That paper is secure in the Bible, right? That's what we're supposed to be with the Messiah. Hidden with the Messiah, our God, the, Mes the Messiah, our, amen? And when the Messiah, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory, the revealing of his family when he comes, amen? Because he is so proud of us. Every day when we go forward, every day when we do something, Every day when we say no to temptation, every day when we do something, God is saying, that's my family. They are striving forward. And every day when you say you're sorry, every day when you see something you can prove on, and you go forth and you do so, the Lord is bragging on us to say, that's my family. They're, they are improving their lives every day. They're growing. Every day, for because they love, they love God Almighty. They love their Messiah. Amen. Let's go to Psalms chapter twenty-five, verse one through twenty-two. Praise the Lord. I live my inner being, the Spirit, to your to you, O Yahweh. I trust in my God. Don't let me be disgraced. Don't let me be disgraced. Amen. You don't. We need to say that sometimes. Amen. Just like David. Psalm here. He's, he, he's doing. Don't let my enemies gloat over me. No one waits for you. Will be disgraced. Disgraced. Disgrace awaits those who break faith for no reason. Make me know your ways, Yahweh. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth. Teach me. For you are God who saves me. My hope is in you all day long. Hallelujah. Remember your compassion and your grace, Yahweh. For these are the ages of old. Don't remember my youth sins or transgressions, but remember me according to your grace. For I, for my sake of your goodness, O Yahweh. Yahweh is good and he is fair. This is why he teaches the sinners the ways to live. Amen. Leads the humble to do what is right. He teaches the humble to live his ways. All Yahweh's paths are grace and truth. Those who keep his covenant and instructions. For the sake of your name, Yahweh, forget, forgive my wickedness. Great th thoughts it is. Who, who is the person who reverence Yahweh? Do, we re do you reverence Yahweh? He will teach him the ways to choose. God's going to teach you the ways to choose. Amen. 
through his spirit. He will re re remain prosperous and his descendants will inherit the land. Yahweh relates enmity with those who fears him. That was the fear of the Messiah, the fear of the word of God, the reverence these things. Amen. He will make them know his covenant. My eyes always directed towards Yahweh. For he will free my feet from the net. Turn me, show me your favor. For I am alone and oppressed. The troubles of my heart are growing and growing. Bring me out of distress. See my affliction and sufferings. Take all the sins away. Concerning my enemies, how they are. And how cruel they hate me. Protect me. Rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced. For I take refuge in you. Let your intelligence and your uprightness preserve me, O God. Because my hope is in you. And who? God. Not government or self, but in God. God redeem Israel from all their troubles. God redeem the church and the synagogue from all their troubles. Amen. God Almighty, praise God. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 through 13. Praise God. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for all things. And let us read. Each one of us, how have, our, have been given grace to be measured by the Messiah's bounties. That is why it says, that is why it says, after he went up into the heights, he led the, cap, the uh, captivities and he gave the gifts to mankind. Now this phrase, he went up, what can it mean if not that the first went down into the lower parts, that is the earth, and the one who went down in himself, the one who went went up far above all the heavens, in order to fill all things, fulfill all things. Moreover, he gave the some people as emissaries, some as prophets, some as proclaimers of the good news. And some as shepherds and teachers. The task is to equip God's people for the work of service that builds the body of the Messiah. That builds the body of the Messiah. Until we all arrive at the unity implying by trusting and knowing God Almighty as full manhood at the standards of maturity set by the Messiah's perfection. Set by the Messiah's perfection on us. Perfecting us every day. Amen. You got to let him perfect us every day. As building our holy temple inside of us. Amen. Let's go to. Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. Amen. Let's head over there. Praise God. And the scripture saith, May God, Allah, of Shalom, may make you completely holy. Make you completely holy. May your enti entirety spirit soul and body may your entire spirit soul and body be kept blameless for the coming of our Yahweh Yeshua the Messiah amen let's read that again this is so encouraging it encourages you so let's read it again may God Elohenu of Shalom make you completely holy May your entire spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless for the coming of Yeshua, 
the Messiah, our Yahweh, the one calls you, is faithful. He will do it. Who will do it in us? The Spirit of God. So we got to trust in God's Spirit, His loving, stern, but loving Holy Spirit that He that He is given each of us that are born again. Praise God. So let's build the holy temple of God every day. Praise God. Let's keep praying for this for the sinners out there to be saved. There's a lot of them these days. Let's keep praying for them. Now, those that are not saved, it's time to get right with God. You Arabs, it's time to get saved. It's time to become holy Arabic people instead of unholy people. God has a purpose and plan for each one of you that are not saved to be saved to, to surrender your transgressions and say Lord I want to do it your way not my way amen is that you is that you are you ready to become a holy Arabic person I hope so Arab person now I want to talk to you Christians and Jews that go by the name only you're lukewarm and you know it you don't have to be that way God will let you know so that you can repent. Are you ready to repent and accept Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior today? I hope so. And you pagan world, are you ready to surrender all to the Lord and be saved as well? If you're all ready, repeat this prayer with me with all your heart, so mind and strength. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as the Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe you're born again and baptized in the Spirit of God is happening right now. The Spirit of God is welling up in you. Renewing that dead spirit and taking that, that heart of stone out of you and giving you a heart of flesh right now. Praise God. And now I want you to be baptized in water, which is which is which uh, takes care of of the emotions and your and the things of your, your mind mind will and emotion it it's it's saturates that part of you you raise out of that water into new life and, and that your emotions and your will and in your mind and it's not totally taken care of but you feel much better it's a process but you feel washed, you feel cleaner in those emotions and those thoughts and your will is more fully toned to do God's will. Amen. Through baptism. Salvation takes care of the, the spiritual things of your needs. And when God comes back, he promises he's going to take care of the, the physical, our body. And give us a glorified body. Amen. God loves us. God has a plan for you. Now let me pray over you, little brothers, little sisters. Father, I pray over them. I pray for divine protection. Father, if you have to send them out of that nation to somewhere that will protect them, I pray that you do so. Father, I ask that they have a hunger for your word and prayer and and a relationship with you, Father. I thank you and praise you. I bless them in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Yahweh saves. Amen. Now those that are believing and receiving for their healing, keep believing, keep receiving. Amen. Keep believing, keep receiving. Now I want to end with the Shalom prayer. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, holiness and brings of peace that passes all understanding be with you. Nothing ever, never broken. May the light of God be with you. May the King of Peace, Jesus Christ, Yahweh saves, Yeshua HaMashiach be with you. Not the peace and safety of this world, but the that brings you destruction, but God's peace that gives you that wholeness so you can have that completeness of peace. Amen. Be with you. God loves you. 
I love you. And remember, do not take the mark of the beast, which is the RFD chip, is the mark of the beast. It comes in, in the hand or the forehead or also in the, the outside of the hand as a tattoo or in the hand. Be careful the EMV. It's a chip on the car that replaces the strip. I suggest leaving it go and not having it and just do cash when they when that's all they have on the cards because that is the technology that will be going right in your hand or your forehead soon right after that so I suggest using cash at that point and when they outlaw cash and they force it right in the hand of the forehead or on top of the hand as a tattoo I suggest that you keep trusting God because God says there's going to be a place of safety it says in his word there'll be places of safety for his saints of God that they will be protected but you got to be under the umbrella of God's protection. Amen. At all times. This is a serious time we live in. God, you know what? It's a minister of gospel. i got to warn you about these things. Because it's the right thing to do. God loves you. I love you. Keep on believing and receiving. Keep on building the holy temple in you. God bless you. Shalom.